I made a microscale version of Rivendell from Lord of the Rings out of Lego. So this is what we have right here, just a general gist look. So let's kind of give the backstory of why I crafted this masterpiece. So essentially back about a year ago, I built the Hogwarts castle and it was an absolutely amazing build. I loved it and so much architecture work, just probably one among my favorite Lego sets I've ever built. And then it got me thinking, especially while I was building this Lego set, I was like, the color scheme kind of reminds me of Rivendell. And so I ended up buying a second set of the Hogwarts castle. As you can kind of see, there's the pieces. And I took and parted it out. So like, there's a bunch of the leftover pieces over here. So we sorted out the most of the bricks and I've used a lot of them to build the Rivendell. So we took and we're, we were building the base and I had to take a few renditions, like my original design had it all as one piece, but I took inspiration from the Hogwarts castle and we have it split into two pieces so it can be easily moved. Just like up here, let's see Hogwarts castle, you can see it's all split so that you can move it in two sections rather than one. And that has been a huge help in all the transporting that I've done for this. And then we just take, slide it back together. And then there we go, it's a nice castle, Rivendell castle. So one of the things though, I personally don't even like this too much. It kind of turned out poorly. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of this building. And I've, a lot of people are saying it's mainly the roof, but I do like the color scheme. I just feel like there's a little bit too much tan. Like one of the things that I did try on Rivendell was using gray roofing like the Hogwarts had, but it did not work for Rivendell. And then I also used to have way more of this foliage on here, the green stuff, and I took a lot of it off and that has made it look better. Um, one of the other quite nifty building techniques was building these archways. I struggled on this a lot, but my brother ended up helping me and I could kind of finish up the roof, but I ran out of this piece up there at that top. And then if we look at close, I have the paths all in brown and it leads around. And then something I don't like is if we take a look at the big building right here, it's kind of not scaled correctly. Um, oh yeah, let's take a <laughs> look. Take by taking the roof off, we can look up inside. And it's almost minifigure scale. Like look at this lumbus bread over there. That's basically minifigure scale. And then for decoration, I have these. I'm like, they look kind of cool and I got a whole bunch in a pick a brick cup over here is just like all my pick a brick stuff. You can see all these fancy pieces I have like this. It's like, I don't know where to use it, but it comes in handy when building projects like so. And then we have our minifigure sized armory right here of a couple swords, only one of which is elvish. And then stuff, it's like the interior work I made on this, very not well done. I did not do, too good on the inside, but there are a couple little, couple fun features around, but not too many. So let's take a look at the inside of this building. See, absolutely boring. And then this one has like, oh yeah, basically nothing except for the gems that are in the windows. So there's like those gems right there. And then I have gems like, right in there as well. So yeah, I did not, the interior work. There you go, that's about the best angle you can get right there. Focus on it, it's not focusing correctly. Oh, it did. Yeah, so that's, that's it. Beyond that, nothing too important. It's all supposed to look good at a distance. So now that you know all the imperfections and the colors on the inside, we take a look from it at a far away. Oh, we do need to put this back on. So you can kind of see how it comes together and it's very fragile in its placements. Yikes, it is very weak build. This is not Lego set worthy. It would come apart, but it gets the general gist and idea. I typically have it up there on my shelf and it looks really good up there, but that's really the, that is it.
there's not much more to it. It just looks good. It took me a year. Oh, actually, okay, guys, I have to tell you this story. The reason it took me a year to build this because I bought the second version of Hogwarts Castle and sorted out all the pieces a year ago. So I was building it, I built the base, and then I took a halt and did stopped building because I, you can tell it's a big piece. Like here's the full Lego collection. Like it makes a presence. Like it took a lot of space. And when I was building it, used up all of this desk space. But I did not used to have this Lego studio and all this place. It used to be, I was in my house and <laughs> there was nowhere to build. So of course, when there's nowhere to build, I can't build my Lego, my Lego set. And so basically, in order to build and finish making Rivendell, I had to build this studio. So it took me then a few months to just hand build this and there was much less Lego things going on, but we have our general Lego studio that I can now build all the Lego at all the times whenever I want. Like we are currently filming this. Oh, almost at midnight. Oh, my stilly watch won't even show me because it's supposed it's, it turns off when it's bedtime. So it, it won't turn on because it's saying you should be asleep. So as I said, I can build Lego anytime now. So it makes it happy. I like having this place. And the best benefit that came out of this place is I was able to finish our Rivendell. So that wraps it up. There's my custom Microscale Rivendell.